everybody, this is Nate. I'm here with my son. He was not originally gonna come with me, but when he saw me headed out the door, he would not let go. He really, really wanted to come with. And it's pretty good that he did because it's a trip that he would actually really like if he understood what was happening. You would not believe it based on uh, looking at it, but this is actually Route 66 that I'm standing on. That's right, the original roadbed. So Route 66, obviously it uh, stretches from Chicago to Los Angeles. And originally it was kind of made in 1926 was when the route was designated. And the original route actually went through Santa Fe and I'll explain that in a little bit. But basically between about 1926 and 1932, the alignment went kind of to the west of town through the town of Agua Fria. In fact, uh, Agua Fria right by Frenchie's Field turns into County Road 66. And I've not been able to confirm that, but you have to think that's the original alignment of Route 66. And so this road right here, this is actually BLM, so Bureau of Land Management land. And right here behind me is a gate that demarcates uh, Bureau of Land Management and U.S. Forest Service land, but this is the original Route 66. And it's gonna go on towards La Bajada Hill, which we're gonna go check out right now. It's one of the most exciting features of the pre-1932 alignment Route 66. Now, I've read a few trip reports of people trying to get to La Bajada, and actually our ultimate goal for the day is to tee a peak right over there. And a lot of the trip reports uh, of late mention a locked gate. Well, you know, to me, this is not locked, right? So this is just a uh, word of advice for people who maybe aren't used to living out west. These gates, they're not intended to keep out people usually. They're really more intended to keep out cattle. Passed a bunch of cows on the way in here. So I'm gonna open up the gate, drive through and close it behind me. I've seen a lot of trip reports talk about this road, say that it's really terrible shape. Uh, honestly, it was not that bad of shape. I've seen much worse roads, but perhaps during monsoon, if it's raining and muddy, then maybe it's bad. But I'm gonna drive through the gate, close it behind me as you should always do, leave gates as you found them. And then we're gonna head over to La Bajada, check it out. So Route 66, if you look at the map right now, Route 66 roughly follows, I want to say, I-57, then I-44, then I-40, uh, and it's route from Chicago to L.A. And you might be thinking, well, wait a second, uh, you know, if you're going west of Amarillo, wouldn't it just make more sense to go straight west to Albuquerque rather than going up and around Santa Fe? And, well, eventually people decided that that was true because in 1937 they rerouted it through Klein's Corners, Moriarty, etc. And um, after that point it was just a straight shot. So you'll see signs in Santa Fe talking about the pre-1937 alignment. And the reason why they did that, I'm pretty sure, is because you have to remember that there were no auto routes like this beforehand. So really what they were doing was they were taking advantage of the roads that already existed. Now, of course, if you're in Amarillo, um, I think that it was the Ozark Trail was a very early auto route that would connect areas in Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and one of the westernmost routes of the Ozark Trail actually connected Amarillo to Santa Rosa and Las Vegas, New Mexico. So it made sense for Route 66 to go through those towns, wind up in Las Vegas. Now, from Las Vegas to Albuquerque, the quickest way you can take is the Santa Fe Trail, which stretches from, I think, Kansas to Santa Fe, of course. And that will take you through like Glorieta Pass and stuff. So that actually, if you go through, if you're heading to the town of Pecos, you go through Glorieta, you'll see a lot of signs about the pre-1937 alignment. Now, once you're in Santa Fe, the quickest and easiest way to get to Albuquerque at the time, if it's, you know, the mid-1920s, is actually the, uh, El, well, is actually El Camino Real, full name being El Camino Real, de Tierra Adentro, which means the Royal Road of the Interior Land. And that's actually what we're on right now. So this road, in addition to being Route 66, is also El Camino Real. And that road, I mean, it has origins in pre-Columbian times. And also it used to connect basically Mexico to New Mexico via El Paso. And it would stretch up, basically follows the Rio Grande. And it's an extremely historic road. It's really cool that this road right here that we're standing on has so much history. 
And you think about all the people that have walked on this road over the millennia, honestly, but even just in the last few hundred years is really amazing to think about. So we're going to get back in the car. We're going to drive the rest of the way down to La Bajada and check it out. I think it'll be a really cool view. You can see some of the roadbed right here. These stacked rocks to build the roadbed. That's pretty cool. We're going to get a much better view of this hill. All right, so just imagine for a second that it's the 1920s. You're trying to get from one side of the country to the other. You're probably not doing it for fun. You're probably doing it because you actually got to get there. Whether you're moving, you've got to get there for some other reason. And this is the way you have to get up in a 1920s vehicle. I really doubt the road was in much better shape then than it is now. And what, I was, what I've read is that people would, basically they would wait and you could hire them to drive your car up. And what I read was that it was common to drive up in reverse. Now there's two reasons that I've seen cited for that. The first reason is that, well, reverse, you have the largest gear ratio. It means that you have kind of the most power to get up the slope. I suppose that's possible. I think the one that's more likely is that cars back then, they had gravity fed carburetors. And if you were going up the hill and it was a steep slope, the gasoline would not actually make it to your carburetor and your car wouldn't work. So you had to go up basically so that your hood, the engine was downhill so it could get fed with fuel. I think that's much more likely, but just think of even having to do that to get somewhere nowadays. You know, people rail on road travel a lot. And uh, the fact is we have it really nice compared to people um, not even a hundred years ago. You can see a little fence right there. From what I've read, you can just pull that fence aside and you can see Tire treads, I think those are probably from a bike. You can possibly hear a dog and roosters. That's the village of La Bajada down there. And actually, it's a very controversial subject that I won't talk about too much now, but maybe maybe on a different hike I can talk about it. The village of, uh, the Pueblo of Cochiti has actually closed off lower access to the hill, citing several reasons, but that's caused a lot of controversy in the village of La Bajada, uh, which is not on Cochiti Pueblo land. We're heading up to Tia Peak right now. It's not a very famous peak. It's, it's only got about five to 600 feet of prominence. Certainly not very high elevation, but I think it's one of the most significant parts of the Santa Fe surrounding area in terms of peaks. If you look around, this is one of the easiest peaks to identify. Um, when I search for it, mostly what I find is there's a campground at Cochiti Lake, which is called Tatia Peak Campground. I have not really seen any video of anybody going up this peak. Seen some trip reports online. I mean, ultimately it looks like a very easy peak, even though it's off trail for at least some portion. And speaking of trail, I was a little surprised to find this road. There's a little dash line on the Forest Service map, which usually means a foot trail. This obviously uh, some kind of vehicle trail now it looks in rough shape. Probably wouldn't drive up it unless I was really looking for an adventure, but clearly others have in recent memory based on the tracks. Well, it didn't take long for that road to go off in some random direction. It does look like there was something here at one point because it's pretty well cleared, but no current tire tracks. Nevertheless, good place to walk.
we made it to Tatia Peak. This whole cliff band behind me is what's known as the Labahada Escarpment. And obviously the Labahada grade is like right here. That, is, that was the original 1926 to 1932 Route 66 alignment. In 1932, they actually moved it further east, southeast sort of, down the escarpment to uh, basically what is now I-25. And then in 1932, or sorry, 1937, they rerouted it completely, uh, rerouting it through Klein's Corners and Moriarty, like I said. Nevertheless, still tons of history here, obviously. Original Route 66, El Camino Real, and then all the pre-Columbian trade routes and stuff before that. It's a very cool area. Yeah. All right, we are headed down. I think that's going to be it for me. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, this, is, this is a little bit of a different video than usual just because I wanted to share a little bit of history. This little guy, if you haven't figured it out, he loves the movie Cars, which means I've had non-stop Cars, Route 66, etc. And it's pretty cool to live so close by to it. So we're heading down now. Thanks for joining us. Bye. We just ran into a gentleman who is an amateur radio enthusiast. And he was actually driving up this road to set up, uh, well, I think he was going to park at the base of the peak and then set up his radio at the peak. So this is awesome. That that's uh, something that people do around here. We're getting pretty close to the car right now, and I realized I forgot to thank uh, <laughs> I forgot to thank the forest rangers and the BLM rangers who uh, I had to call them because I was seeing all these reports about that gate being locked, and I wanted to ensure that it wouldn't be. And they were very helpful, at least as much as they could be. So definitely shout out to them. Thanks to them, and uh, thanks to you for watching. See you later.